our faith is to be kept very strong in Jesus. He said in John 16, 33, in this world, we will have persecution, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and joy and a sound mind. And we know that Jesus is the anchor of our hope. Let's turn to him and pray earnestly. We do know that the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Our Jesus walked on water. He raised the dead. He multiplied the food. He did all great things, silencing the storms of trouble. He is with us today to do exactly that. What do you expect? Expect a miracle. God gives us these promises throughout the Bible. Listen to all the words of Psalms 91. And as you hear verse 1, put your name and put the names of all your loved ones right where it begins. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now this speaks of being very close and under a shadow. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. He is that strong tower and the righteous run into it. Yes, and he does walk on those waters, those troubled waters that we see all around us. Yes, he is silencing the storms. Yes, he will open blind eyes. Yes, he will deliver us from the snare of the flower, fowler, and the noisome pestilence. He will cover us with his protection. His truth is our shield and our buckler. Wear your spiritual armor. The shield will stop the fiery darts of the enemy. And the word of God is your only offensive weapon. It is your Bible. Hold it fast and know the words and use it and say it is written. When the enemy comes to accuse or give you fear, just read. It is written. Many will fall, but it will not come near to you because you have made the Lord most high your habitation and your refuge. No evil will befall you. Neither will any plague come near your dwelling. He will give his angels charge over you. The heavenly angels will be all around you and surround you and keep you safe. When I pastored in Guerneville, many people said that the angels were stationed outside of my door during the night season and also during the day. Nothing was going to happen to me, though I was way out in the woods of Northern California by myself for quite a long time. Our Lord was right with us in that time, and he is today right with you. He prepared himself for Calvary at the Last Supper, and he took his closest friends with him for a private briefing up on the hilltop, up on the Mount of Olives. And as he walked, he passed over the brook of Kidron. And this is where they were preparing those unblemished lambs for the Passover feast. Remember, Jesus is our Passover lamb. He is without spot or blemish. He is the only one that could have found the holy propitiation and favor of Almighty God because he is God. It had to be God on that Calvary tree on that day to be accepted by a most holy God. When Jesus got up into Gethsemane with his disciples, they fell asleep and he said, could you not tarry with me one hour? And then he cried out to the father and he said, Father God, he said, if it be possible, take this cup away from me, because he knew that the cup would hold all the sins of the world and that he would become sin to eradicate that sin from the world. He knew what that cup would hold, but he said, not my will, but thy will be done, most holy Father. 
He had come to earth for the very purpose of dying for all humanity. Our Jesus was preparing himself at Gethsemane for the work that he would do on Calvary. And those disciples, they were not able to satisfy his human need at that hour. They could not comfort him. It took an angel from heaven to comfort our Jesus in his most agonizing moments. Luke twenty two forty two tells us that there was blood from the capillaries of his forehead as he sweated great drops of blood in his agony of despair. Have you been to Gethsemane in prayer? Are you in prayer now for the things that are going on around us? I call you up, my friends. Pray earnestly for the world today. And know that the very things that Jesus prayed that day are going to come to pass because he prayed seven priorities, seven things that he asked for, petitions that he asked Abba Father, his Abba Father. And let's cry out today even in concert with our precious Jesus today. He prayed that he would be glorified with the same glory that he had before he came to the earth. Remember Philippians 2 tells us that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he found himself in the fashion of men, and he humbled himself, even obedience to the cross. And there the Father proclaimed, at the sound of the name of Jesus, every tongue would confess and every knee would bow that he is Lord. He prayed for the restoration of that eternal glory and for the safety of all believers from the world and from the evil one. He said, I'm no longer in this world, but I pray that you will keep my followers from the evil one. Now, this is the prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane in John 17. So you see, this prayer is going to keep us right now. He prayed that we would be kept from the evil one and for all of the calamities that would come upon this world. We are his followers. He prayed for us in this way. It's very strong and it's very powerful. He prayed for our safety. And then he prayed for our sanctification and he prayed that we would be sanctified through his truth. That the belt of truth that we wear is the belt of honesty and those things that he's asked it to dwell upon, all the things that have virtue and are of good report. So the good report is that this virus is gone very soon. And that's what we must dwell upon. That is the belt of truth. Jesus is truth. And receive this awesome word today, the belt of truth around you today. All things together work for good for those that love God are called according to his purpose. You're called today for this purpose of prayer and holding that truth in your hands. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is the belt of truth. And he prayed that. He prayed for the spiritual unity of all believers. Read this with me in John 17, verse 21. For we are to sanctify and be finished. He said, I have finished the work that I've been sent to do. Sanctify them right now, O Father, that they may be one, they may be one in us as I am in you, and they may be in us. An amazing prayer. Jesus always declared he was one with the Father, and now he is calling us to be sanctified and unified, that we would be one with him. And we will be one with him if the blood of Jesus Christ covers your life. And then he said that the world might believe. There are many that will hear this message and they will just hear this message. Maybe they'll have to go through trials before they will believe. But Jesus said he had not lost one that the Father had given to him. And I believe that today for all of us, that he has not lost one of us 
the Father has given to him. And the Lord Jesus prays, glorify me now, my Father, with the same glory that I had before the foundations of the world. And remember that the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And without him was not anything created that was created. Remember that in him is life and the light of the world. And the light came into the world that it believed him not, for their deeds were evil. Those words were written in John 1 by John the Beloved, who was the very closest to Jesus. He was at the cross of Calvary. He was the only disciple that didn't run away. And he was given the care of the mother of Jesus at that very cross. It's never too late to give your heart to Christ. On the cross, Jesus freed that thief and gave him eternal life. He said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. My friends, if today was your last day, could you cry out to God and say, Lord, save me, take care of me? You would hear his voice say, this day, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Many years ago, I heard those words as I was driving on the freeway north some 25 years ago. I heard those words, an audible voice from heaven, and it was very clear, and I didn't know at that time what was going to happen. But a few minutes later, I saw a very terrible accident. And as I went to the scene of the accident, I gave those very words to a young man named Joe. And that very day, he went on to be with the Lord. I was called back to do his service. And after the service in Button Willow, California, his pastor, Joe's pastor, came up to me and said, those very words were given to Joe just a week ago. I told him if he didn't stop driving so terribly that he might have an accident on the freeway. But before the Lord would take him home, he would hear the words, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. This is a very real truth, and it's the first time that I ever heard the audible voice of the Heavenly Father. I heard it as the sound of a trumpet. I heard it all in one instant, the entire scripture. If we heard that scripture in real time, we would hear each word just as you hear the sound of my voice. But I heard that scripture instantly, and it came right out of heaven. It had to be right out of heaven. Now, my friends, I will share this with you. Just before this virus hit, it was on December 28th, 2019. It is called the virus of 2019, COVID-19. I heard another audible voice, the second audible voice in 45 years of knowing Jesus as a personal savior. This time, I was awakened from sleep in my room and I heard this voice in real time, expect a miracle, exactly that. And I have been walking in that marvelous word for the last three months. I traveled to California and an amazing act of God, a miracle came into my family. Sovereignly, a miracle came. And now today, I'm going to say a double portion of that miracle come to pass, O Lord, as we hear the words, expect a miracle. And I'm going to say, yes, Lord, yes, I expect the miracle of this entire virus to be gone in the name of Jesus. Our response to the deep agony of our Lord Jesus Christ is that we too will go to our personal Gethsemane and that we will pray the fervent prayers and that we will believe God for miracle after miracle after miracle as this thing will cease and desist instantly around the world. 
the Lord Jesus will hear our prayers. Let us begin with the, the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. And we can all do this. We all know this prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, O Lord, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, for thine alone is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Expect a miracle. Hey, Dominic and Susan and I will be reading John chapter 18 uh, with uh, uh, some commentary. And we are right now praying that this chapter and the messages in it would speak into our lives and your lives, and whoever may be viewing this. We pray, Lord, that you would spark fresh inspiration and understanding and knowledge of your great love and what you have done and are doing in each of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'll be reading now from John, excuse me, uh, uh, Dominic will be reading from John chapter 18, uh, starting with verse 1. Thank you, David. John 18, I'll be reading 1 through 14. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where he was, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he had said, when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke, of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. There's a lot to unpack in that section. Um, what stands out bigger than anything else to me, and it really touched me as we were preparing to... Uh, to read today that I didn't even realize the the part where everybody drew back and fell to the ground and it was an epiphany to me because uh, because that that really struck me because I know it was the name of Jesus that did that and it wasn't until I read that and I read the Bible and every time I do I feel like oh there's a little nugget there but that's huge and it reminds me of Philippians 2 9 and it really made sense too, because this is what it felt like. Um, and I'm going to read Philippians 2, 9 uh, through 11, because it applied right there. And it just reminds us how powerful the name of Jesus is. And it's Jesus saying, I am he. And he says, therefore, this is Philippians 2, 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those here on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So reading that today, and I'm surprised, I, I've read that, that I've read John 18, I'm sure dozens, if not hundreds of times in my life, 
And yet I don't didn't realize the strength of that until today. And sometimes that's how the word works. And I did pray. We all prayed before we we uh, read because we want to make sure this is this is a message that's led by God for you, the listener. And I have to say that God revealed that to me to remind me how powerful the name of Jesus is, because there are times where I am struggling. And just last week, and it was such a blessing because David had reminded me, just say the name Jesus. And I forgot. I had forgotten before that that's how that's how important it is. And when I did, when I called on the name of Jesus, just saying the name Jesus alone calmed so many situations this week alone reminding me and so it just is it all comes together it's such it's a living word for a reason it it lives and it it breathes and it reminds me every day that that god wants us focused on him focus on him he'll take care of the rest he's got us all taken care of we forget we we focus on the shiny things here on earth that's just the the enemy distracting us when our shiny thing is 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 in heaven Praise God. Now I'm going to pass it on to Susan. She'll read. She'll continue reading. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Continuing with verse 17. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of these man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. This uh, reminds us of John 13, 37 through 38, where Peter said to Jesus, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Continuing with John um, 18, verse 19, the high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I also taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him down to Caiaphas, excuse me, the high priest. Now Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, you are not also one of these disciples, are you? He said, he denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of him whose ear Peter cut off, said, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately a rooster crowed. Peter um, soon repented of his denials, as seen in Luke twenty-two sixty through 62, where he is um, speaking almost these same identical words. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. And uh, first John one nine gives hope to those in Peter's shoes, stating, "If we confess our sins, it is faithful and just. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." Also, um, in uh, the Gospel of Luke, verse twenty three, or Luke twenty two, verse thirty one, the Lord had said to Simon. To Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that thy faith will not fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen my brethren. And again, we uh, see this reference in John 21, after the Lord's resurrection, and he's talking to his disciples 
Um, and um, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto them, Feed my lambs. And this goes on um, a couple of more times and signifies uh, the restoration of Peter. And so we can thank the Lord that he does uh, restore all things. I praise God. And I'll now uh, pass this on to David. Amen. Thank you, Susan. And I'll be reading from uh, verse 28. And there's a heading on that that says, In Pilate's Court. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium, and it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the Praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he would die. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, calling Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered him. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I would not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. This is also translated, It is you who say I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Then they all cried again, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. That's the end of chapter 18. There are many remarkable things going on in this interaction. One of the key things that we see is that it had to happen this way where the Romans were commissioned or took upon themselves the the task of execution of Jesus. Uh, because that meant it would be by crucifixion and Jesus had already predicted that that would be the manner in which he would die. And when he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And John remarks at that time that he said this regarding the way in which he would be giving his life. So a lot of things are happening because it is part of God's plan that it would be done in this way and bring ultimately all things to work together for good. Barabbas is the first of the human race uh, that came to realize that Jesus had died for him. He was a robber. Maybe he repented like the thief on the cross did. We would hope that. Pilate also asked this interesting question, what is truth? But he wasn't really interested in pursuing the answer to that question. He was speaking to the son of God who is truth incarnate. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And even though Pilate wasn't ready to explore what Jesus had said, we ought to be exploring that because Jesus said, if you 
those who know the truth, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And he came to bear witness of the truth. And he is the way and the truth and the life for all who believe in him. So we're grateful for uh, all that he has done. And he's preparing to carry out what he said he would be doing in John 17, uh, where he said, um, Father, be glorified and let your son be glorified in you. Glorify your son as uh, he has glorified you. Paraphrasing John, first part of, of uh, John 17. So Jesus was faithful, faithful to the end. Uh, he told Peter, uh, put away your sword. Am I not going to drink the cup that my father gave me to drink? And Jesus had prayed, thy will be done, and not my will, but your will be done. He prayed to the father. He said, if it be possible that this cup be taken from me, uh, let, let that be so. Nevertheless, your will be done. And, uh, and he carried out his assignment to bring salvation to all who believe in him. And he did it faithfully for the glory of God. Father, we just thank you so much that we have this example and we have the reality of your sending Jesus to take the sins of the world upon himself. As John said, when he viewed Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And you take away the sins of all who believe in you. You wash us free, uh, wash us to be clean and free from sin and to walk in the power that you also uh, demonstrated when you cast out the devil from people and you also brought uh, new life wherever you went. You call us to be your ambassadors to do the same. And you said, even greater than things than you have seen, you will do as the Holy Spirit is guiding you in the walk that I'm assigning you to do. So, Father, we are so grateful for this assignment. We pray that we will do it well and that you will say when we enter into eternity, well done, my good and faithful servant. We thank you for the privilege it is to serve you in all things at every moment. In Jesus' name, amen. This concludes our time today.